Welcome back to Switch Corner, my name is Alex and today we're taking a performance review look at Astronia on the Nintendo Switch. This, it's a massive game this one, played it back at release on the Xbox, but it's had its fair share of issues since launch, so how does it hold up on the Switch and is it now going to be worth your cash in this Switch form? Well hit subscribe if you love the Switch, as much as we all do here, join our growing family and let's get started. Story then and realistically, look, there's very little in here, but I wanted to put this in briefly today because while it doesn't really have a direct path to follow, you know, it's mainly objective based, it does have an end game and some mysterious structures around this world. That may not be, you know, a traditional story, but it definitely drove up the intrigue and my natural curiosity drove me to work towards unlocking them. The overall theme though, you play as an astroneer, sent into the frontiers by a company called Exodynamics. That said, again, like it's really a game of figuring things out for yourself, getting creative, and this all takes a backseat to that very thing. So gameplay on what we have here is a sandbox adventure game. For this performance review, I won't be attaching a dedicated score as such, but I will give you a good overview of my experience with the full game back at release and how I feel towards this Switch variation. For those that maybe haven't played this one before, it's really a combination of resource gathering, exploration, and then somewhat survival. The survival, though it is minimalistic, it's more oxygen management, electronic management as well to a certain extent, and that is about it. So the gameplay then and opening in campaign you will land on the first planet, you'll be given a small hub location, it kind of acts as a checkpoint while generating minimal power and now the rest, well that's really going to be up to you. In total you can expect to find here 7 planets to jump between freely and it also supports multiplayer allowing for up to 4 players online. Kicking things off though, really your main focus is going to be this, lean into generating oxygen, how can you get further, work out how to generate more power, and then finally gather resources to build the necessary equipment. Oxygen though, like it's always given to you if you are close enough to one of your structures, thanks to what is a handy blue line that appears on screen, but you're going to want to immediately expand out your reach to allow for some, you know, real exploration without the worry of turning around halfway out. The simplified way to do this initially is going to be craft tethers, these can be dropped as you progress extending that reach. It's really a game that's built on the satisfaction of crafting new items and gradually exploring more of the unknown. I found it is addictive as I work towards building up a larger and larger base. This starts off, I will say, relatively simple storage devices, printing tools to construct more, but it quickly escalates to think things like rovers giving you a clear advantage in that traversal. That opening of the game though it can be slow, it's a game which stops you in your tracks as you understand what it wants next of you with its objectives. That's really what I enjoyed the most here though, it at least gives you something to get going with the use of what is a reward system, you know, achieve a target, build something, now here is a reward that's going to help you on this journey. It's kind of teaching you the ropes without holding your hand. From here though, now it's going to be really down to you, go and explore not only for those resources, but look for secret or most structures and salvage goods that are out there. This research can lead to new devices that you can build. The most essential part of Astroneer though, it's got to be the backpack and the attached deform tool. This allows you to shape and dig up this world. Simple enough, you can dig down, smooth out the land or raise it up and this can lead to all sorts of creativity and kind of almost space cave diving. It can also get you out of a bad situation once in a while. At the same time, it can also put you in a bad situation as well. Here's a good example, one moment I dropped into a cavern, now this was not the first time it happened, the first few times I definitely died very quickly. I actually thought this instance was death as well, something that means you lose all belongings on your person, but I was able to quickly create a tunnel sloping up and find my home base, that meant I was again tethered to oxygen. This is then connected to the backpack, and the backpack actually limits how much you can carry at any one time, so prepping for a trip it's kind of essential, you know, what's the minimum you need to take so you can bring back as much as possible. That was kind of always my first thought path. Sometimes that worked out, others I definitely passed out. 
If you don't fancy the idea then of completing objectives and facing that challenge, you know, exploring and uncovering the secrets and how to build things, creative's gonna be the mode for you. It basically gives you access to anything and there's no restrictions, no need to gather resources or bytes. Problems with the game then are the controls with the Joy-Con or the Pro Controller, they definitely take a little getting used to. Now problems, that's kind of a strong word honestly, rather expect to take some time to master them and practice them. That really goes for any console you can play this game on. The standard functionality is here as well, you know movement to the left stick, camera on the right, but it's when you begin to unlock everything else that it can get a little bit confusing. For example, let me give you a quick rundown of everything it introduces you to in the opening moments. A is jump, B is your backpack. When you open your backpack, you can select items with a cursor. You can drop tethers with down on the D-pad. Kind of awkward when you're moving at the same time with the left stick, unless you want to, you know, stop movement and start up again. Maybe you'll use the left and right bumper, but you'll need to position these correctly now at the top of the backpack. I think you're starting to get the idea here, there's a lot to memorize and even kind of adjust and even on returning my first hour or so it was hitting the incorrect buttons and facing what I would call a little frustration. The biggest control scheme then though I have kind of a love-hate relationship with, that is the on-screen cursor. Press the left trigger, aim with the right, pick up with the right trigger. This is needed because often devices have, you know, multiple buttons and items to interact with but on screen cursors with a controller, they can always be a little temperamental to say the least. That said though, and I wanna give them credit here, I see no other way they could have got all of this control scheme onto the Switch or any other console for that matter, making it any easier. I think they did the best with what they had. The final thing I do want to note while there was the very occasional stutter in the frame rate, just here and there, it seems they've done a fantastic job of this. Back at launch on the Xbox, this was temperamental. They've definitely cut some corners for the Switch, which we'll get to in visuals, but I'll say it now, like this has absolutely paid off. Finally then, the game, it is repetitive, like it's gonna throw you onto these different worlds, ask you to explore, but largely keep on crafting and starting somewhat back at the beginning almost. It could have done with just a little bit more in the sense of forward progression and not almost a two steps forward, one step back approach. That said though, like my first playthrough, it definitely kept me coming back and no doubt that will have the same impact for many now it arrives on the Switch, just maybe not for huge extended sessions. So graphics and this is where the cuts have occurred, but I'm honestly impressed. Look, shadow work, it's definitely been pulled back, but nothing that I would say, you know, noticeably impacts the game because it's always had such a unique, almost low poly style to it that it's able to stand up now on its own. It's just vivid, the terrain is unique, and aside from the occasional massive pothole in the land, which can be a little difficult to spot at times and often lead to death, yeah, I think they did a great job with its variety. The main issue, it's in the popping though, that's now present with this game on the Switch, while they seem to have, for the most part, focused on, let's say, more decorative elements popping up in the distance, it can just occasionally impact resources, or let's say the leftovers of prior missions, meaning, you know, items you can research. An early example, there's actually a tower with light, which absolutely intriguing, fires this kind of beam of light into the sky that you can see from the distance, that was, on the Switch, just a little bit more difficult to identify, though again, didn't hugely impact at the same time. Look, visually, there's no question, look, it's so simple in its design, but so effective at the same time. It's feeling alien while allowing you a ton of freedom and also a ton of creativity in, like, how you can shape this world. Audio, finally, it's minimalistic, but does enough to reinforce the atmosphere. It's never musically heavy, but it has enough sound effects in here that it never feels empty. Something that's surprisingly difficult to pull off. It's why games actually tend to focus on music. It can mask a lot of the silence. Think, though, all of your tools, that exploration, it has something to audibly recognize. And then your tools, the deform tool in particular, it is an absolute highlight. So the final verdict, and as I said, I did not finish this game on the Switch. It is a beast of a game. They say on how long to beat, around 20 hours for the main story. Honestly, I'm not buying that. I know for sure it took me way longer, and you could easily go endless if you can keep, you know, its limited range of activities engaging thanks to that creative mode. 
Hopefully though it finds an audience now on the Switch because the care that went into the port, or at least from my experience of the opening 5 hours or so, it's clear the amount of care that went in. If I was rating this game, think kind of a crossover of my time with it on Xbox where I got to experience the full thing and what I've seen of the port work this far, it would be a good 7 out of 10. It's the repetition that ends up getting to me, but I can't fault the work I've seen this far, and that's the exact same score I would give it on any other platform. Will you be checking this one out then, or are you holding onto that cash? I'll be continuing this journey, kind of in bite-sized chunks in my spare time. With that then, like a shout out to the patrons of the channel who are going above and beyond to support Switch Corner. It helps more than you know, so thank you all so much. Then hit subscribe if you love the Switch, as much as we all do here, join our growing family, and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.